How a person is affected by the evil that he or she does. The first point I want to start with is a verse of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says loud and clear, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ Whoever turns away from our reminder, whoever is not bothered about our command, our instruction, we give them a life that is very, very narrow, a life that is full of depression, a life that is filled with sadness, a life that is filled with anxiety and stress. That's what Allah says. So the first effect of turning away from the command of Allah or not fulfilling the, the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala engaging in the prohibitions. Remember there are two things to disobey Allah one of two ways. Either you don't do what he has asked you to do. Number one or you do what he told you not to do two ways. A person who stays away from prayer, for example, a person who does not give his zakah, a person who does not dress appropriately, those are sins for not having done what Allah instructed you to do. Then a person who commits adultery, a person who gambles, a person who eats interest, and so many other sins where Allah told you don't do this, and then one does it, that is the other type of sin. So Allah says, whoever turns away from us, from our reminder, the reminder includes both of these, we firstly give them a life that is filled with all forms of difficulty and hardship. Now one might say, how do I know that what I'm going through right now is a result of my sin or it's just an ordinary test as a result of elevation of status. There is one main way of telling when you are a believer who is concerned to obey Allah and to please Allah, you accept whatever comes in your direction with pleasure. That's what happens. You are not depressed about it. If you suffered, your home was taken away from you, you were evicted, you're on the road, you don't have food, you still find on your tongue, Alhamdulillah. Oh Allah, I'm in a much better condition than others. So you are not depressed about it to the degree that you become a failure in every way, especially mentally. You lose everything and you have such depression that you begin to question Allah. In that case, perhaps it may be the result of something you've done that you were not supposed to do or something you did not do that you were supposed to do. But Allah says, when we catch you, we will not let go. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not let that happen to us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us even in the Quran and in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he gives us time. He gives us time up to what is known as ajal. Ajal means prescribed time. You want to commit mischief, Allah says you will taste the effect of that mischief. But when we decide to punish you seriously, then that would be the prescribed time of the end. When the fixed time of Allah comes, it's not going to be delayed. And obviously death is something that is never delayed. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this. Another very, very strong effect of sin, very clear effect of sin is the knowledge you have of the religion begins to diminish. You start forgetting what you know. You learned the Quran, you learned something, you learned a few ahadith, you learned rules, you learned regulations. You begin to lose it as a result of sins that are committed, as a result of not fulfilling your prayer, as a result of not fulfilling the obligation Allah has placed upon you, as a result of eating haram, as a result of uh, that which will displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being done, you start forgetting. And when we forget the knowledge, guess what happens? You lose khashia, you lose concentration, and you lose the beautiful taste of worship. So a person who is engr engrossed in a sinful life, he doesn't want to pray. It's such a burden. It is such a big burden. He or she doesn't want to dress appropriately. It is such a big burden. Notice I said he or she, because it's also he, not only she. 
You know, people think that rules regarding clothing more for women. The answer or should, the reality is, do you know a lot of the time some of the young boys wear tight clothing they're not supposed to be wearing. They show half their backsides. They're not supposed to be the case. They want to show off their chest saying that it's only from the navel to the knee. That's not true. You need to cover respectfully in a dignified manner as a believer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So it becomes so hard to dress properly because your life is filled with sin. Subhanallah, knowledge is gone. You not you find it so difficult to make wudu, like it's a burden because you're doing something wrong. That's the reason. So Allah takes away the sweetness of acts of worship from a person who sins. And remember, I'm not going to go into every sin and what it is because the list of sins is Endless, endless meaning so many things people could do. Sometimes a deed that appears to be good can become sinful if the intention is dirty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us cleanse our intention. So to have knowledge snatched away, to have the sweetness of worship snatched away, then one sin leads to another. When you start committing sin, initially it doesn't feel like it's something so serious. Or should I say, initially it feels like, you know what, this was just a one-off, I'm not going to do it again. When you do it again and a third time, it becomes easier to sin. That's a result of the evil effects of the sins that a believer engages in. It becomes such that you just feel like carrying on. From this sin, you commit another one and then you say, by the way, I am committing that. Let me just go into here. I went into the nightclub. Now there's alcohol. Let me just drink. Now that I'm drinking, there's a bit of drugs. Let me just do that. Now that that has happened, the, you know, the adultery comes with it. Let me go. Before you know it, you are drowning in so many different sins that you feel that you are now at the end because you are depressed. You are stressed. You are sad. So much has happened. And at the same time, you actually feel within you. There is so much of darkness in my life. This is why the door of Tawbah is open. I know I will speak about it towards the end, but I need to mention it just in case someone dozes off near the end. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Because this is a topic people don't like to hear. We always talk about, you know, goodness. Today we're talking about punishment. Today we're talking about how your evil deeds have an effect on you. Because we are struggling, my brothers and sisters. Here's another one. Do you know that when you seek Allah's forgiveness and you have come onto the right page with Allah, He opens the doors of sustenance, rizq for you in all different ways. The minute you turn your back on Allah, the f one of the first things He snatches away is your sustenance, no baraka, no blessing in it. You might say, well, my sustenance was written 500 years before I was born. Correct. It was also written that you were going to sin. And as a result of that, you were going to suffer. So the evil effects of sin, my brothers and sisters, before they set in, let's ask Allah's forgiveness. Allah says Allah will not punish them for as long as they are seeking forgiveness. So if you seek forgiveness while you are genuinely asking Allah's forgiveness, He says, I'm not going to punish you. I'm merciful enough to say, okay, fine, we've heard this. Subhanallah, subhanallah. So Allah takes away sustenance. Today, people, what we tend to find is because we are in a desperate situation, maybe we don't have wealth, maybe we're struggling in business, we tend to think it's okay to resort to that which is prohibited that, you know, Allah will forgive us. So you want to eat interest, you want to do that which is haram, you want to perhaps steal from someone, you want to deceive someone, you want to just go and do a deal that is not acceptable Islamically. You might have a figure, but you don't have the blessing. You might have a large sum, but it will come about with no goodness. Allah takes what He wants through sickness. Allah takes through damage. Allah takes through accidents, loss, all this. If you haven't paid your zakah, the sin that is actually perpetrated, the result of it is Allah takes that money anyway. I'd rather give it willingly. You know, that money is supposed to be out of your system. I rather give it willingly than for Allah to extract it from me in a way that I looked at as something, some disaster. So this is why be charitable. Similarly, if you've earned haram, it's not actually legitimate for you. Allah will take it away. At some point it's going to go. In what? In all sorts of waste. It will result in the person eating haram. So your energy that you've derived is actually made from haram means it will only be encouraged to do that which is haram. So if someone's wealth is haram, they've been eating it, 
they love to go and commit adultery, to go and tamper with perhaps uh, something that is not allowed, maybe to go to the clubs, maybe to do that which is prohibited, and the money goes. Before you know it, where's my million? Well, how did you earn the million? If it was hard earned with your sweat, perhaps you would have been more conscious of where it was spent. But when it is not, and when you've got it through clandestine means, what do you expect when it comes to spending it? It's going to go. So remember in Islam, we are taught more important than the figure is the blessing of the Almighty. And that is clean and clear. Allah blesses people. My brothers and sisters, be happy with the test that Allah has tested you with. You cannot, when you see the examination paper, decide that, you know what? Sorry, invigilator, this question here, I don't want it. I'll only answer question two and three. Number one, not for me. You fail your test. Same applies. Allah chose your paper for you. You have to look at it and say, Alhamdulillah, I'm going to attempt every question, try my best. And subhanallah, you will succeed by the help of Allah and His mercy. But you need to be on the right page. Let's move on. Similarly, when it comes to the issue of sinning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, that the gifts of Allah that He has given you, He starts taking them away. So Allah gave you something. You were happy, happy in your marriage, happy with your children. Everything was happening cool and mashallah. You know, as we say, everything was flowing, subhanallah. And suddenly, when we started disobeying Allah in our own ways, Allah says, okay, I give you a chance. Are you turning? No, you're not turning. Are you turning? Allah shows you one or two signs. He gives you a few hints. And after that, you know what? It starts. There's no happiness in my home. There's a problem. My wife of how many years? Suddenly I've got a huge issue. And suddenly this, and I'm stressed. Like I told you, there is a difference between the test of Allah and the punishment of Allah. Big difference. The test of Allah, you are happy with it. The punishment of Allah, you are angry. You are so cross, upset. It it destroys your emotional uh, balance completely. That is the punishment of Allah without a doubt, without a doubt. We need to go back and thank Allah. Oh Allah, I thank you. I really thank you that you've chosen for me these tests. Ya Allah, help me through my problems, my issues. So when we see the ni'am or the gifts of Allah being snatched away from us one by one, we need to go back and look at what we've done that we were not supposed to do or what we did not do that we were supposed to do. And we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.